The news is less than a few hours old and already it's having profound personal and political impact right across Australia. So let's go straight to Hugh Rimmington now. Hugh, the Holden is part of our national DNA. So how has it come to this and who's to blame? Well, Sandra, blame is certainly being thrown around at the moment. The government saying the carbon tax had something to do with uh, Holden's decision. But uh, the Labor Party saying uh, this is the government that has uh, driven Holden out of manufacturing in this country through uh, not supporting, not stumping up uh, more money uh, to the company. Holden itself is simply saying the decision was made in the last few hours. It is irreversible. It says it blames a perfect storm, the high Aussie dollar, uh, the high cost of manufacture here in Australia and the small scale of a local highly competitive market. Toyota now says it is under unprecedented pressure as it tries to stay on as the sole vehicle manufacturer in the country. This is a grim, grim day for the Australian economy. Around two o'clock, Holden workers were called to meetings in Adelaide and Melbourne. The news, a hammer blow. Everyone saw it coming. Who know? Who cares? I'm over. It's a sad day for manufacturing in Australia. What was it like being in that meeting? Terrible. Union leaders unable to contain their emotions. You know, my heart... Um, sorry. The news was announced in state and federal parliaments. This is a difficult day for Australians. By the end of 2017, Holdens will no longer be made in Australia. Nearly 3,000 direct jobs will go, but up to 200,000 jobs in wider support industries are now said to be at risk. If you cut the trunk down, the branches come down with it. Just yesterday, the federal government signalled there would be no more taxpayer funding for Holden. The Treasurer challenging the company to That's make its judge. intentions plain. Either you're here or you're not. Overnight, Detroit made that call. A heritage that produced our first all-Australian-made family cars is ending. As painful as it is to say, building cars in this country is just not sustainable. This is a decision, Madam Speaker, that affects thousands and thousands of South Australians and Victorians. Oh, what was that? Did and it is a tragic situation. There's nothing that I can say to anybody that will take the sting from this announcement. We will do everything we can to assist during this transition. The implications can hardly be overstated. Some economists believe the decline in car manufacturing combined with slowing growth in the mining sector could bring on a recession. Politicians inevitably looking to lay blame. The last one standing, Toyota, says it must now determine whether it can continue operating as the sole vehicle manufacturer in the country. Hasn't the government got exactly what it wanted and won't Australia's workers pay for their failure? Please spare us the hypocrisy the from the Labor the Party. Melbourne ports. All that noise unlikely to comfort a single car industry worker tonight. Now, General Motors Holden today says it does still see a vibrant future for itself in Australia, but of course, what it's talking about is a future where all Holden cars post 2017 will be made somewhere else and imported into Australia. Sandra. Thank you. Hugh Rimmington reporting from Canberra. This is 7 News at 6 with Mark Ferguson. Good evening. In what's seen as a fatal blow to Australia's car industry, Holden has announced its factories will close by the end of 2017. The decision from Detroit means nearly 3,000 Australian workers will lose their jobs at Holden, while Toyota is now considering whether it too will be forced to close. Holden workers are summoned into the grounds of Adelaide's Elizabeth plant to hear the news they all dreaded. After 65 years of car making in Australia, this is the end of the road. Holden is letting go. Oh, I think it was inevitable, but it's still hard to take once you, once you hear it, you know. Workers in Melbourne were told at the same time. It's a great iconic company. It's a shame what's happening. Some were philosophical. All good things come to an end, I guess. The end will come in 2017. Holden's managing director, Mike Devereux, said the decision was made at General Motors US headquarters and that he only learned late yesterday. As painful as it is to say, building cars in this country is just not sustainable. 2,900 jobs will go over the next four years, 1,600 in Adelaide, 1,300 in Melbourne. Victim, Holden says, of a high dollar, high production costs and a limited domestic market. In many ways, 
Australia's automotive industry is up against a perfect storm of negative influences. An industry that is dying. Mitsubishi pulled out in 2008, Ford will leave in 2016, Holden in 2017. And then there was one, Toyota. This here is actually our 50th year of manufacturing cars, starting on this site back in 1963. So we're determined to stay here for the long haul. Holden has received $1.8 billion in taxpayer subsidies over the past decade. It didn't blame either side of politics for its decision today, but that didn't stop them blaming each other. The political collision started yesterday when the Treasurer demanded Holden announce its intentions. Either you're here or you're not. Leading to this today. Treasurer Hockey dared Holden to withdraw from Australia and he got his way. You know, there wasn't that outrage around when under Labor Mitsubishi left and Ford left. For Holden workers, today was inevitable, but that doesn't make it any easier. In some ways, is it a relief? No, it's never a relief to lose your job, is it? And political editor Mark Riley joins us now. Mark, is the Abbott government to blame for driving Holden away? Partially, Mark, but it's unfair to lay all the blame at the Abbott government's feet. Uh, Labor was in for six years and it obviously didn't do enough to keep Holden here either. But I think the two, undeniably, the two big factors in today's decision were the high Australian dollar, which made it very difficult for Holden Australia to compete internationally. And the second thing is Holden didn't sell enough cars. It wasn't making enough cars uh, that were acceptable to the market. People weren't buying them. That's the story, Mark. Mark Riley in Canberra. Thank you. The demise of GMH will be the end of an automotive badge that's as Australian as football, meat pies, kangaroos and, well, Holden cars. They've been made since 1948. At one stage, one in five cars on Australian roads was a Holden. Ride the luxury equipment he chose. The cars have changed. Technology. Luxury. But for 65 years, one thing stayed the same. New Holden Commodore. They were built here. And in 1948, Prime Minister Chifley launched Australia's own car, Holden. A former Adelaide saddlery merged with American General Motors quickly dominated the post-war market. And Des West Holden Monaro quickly takes the lead. There was the rivalry on the racetracks. Go to Mighty Blue 8 Commodores! And between families. There's been a sort of cultural divide. You were either a Holden man or a Ford man. And... We love both all these other countries loved them too, with exports across Asia and the Commonwealth. The cars would star on the big screen. I am the night rider. And the small. The Kingswood! <laughs> You're not taking the Kingswood! In the 1960s, Holden had 19,000 workers and 10 plants. It's the kind of car that could tempt anyone. By the mid-80s, Holden's dominance was waning. It lost most of its crucial export market. Despite billions of dollars in taxpayer help, Detroit's decided it's the end of the road. Devotees are devastated. I think it's because we're brought up on them. And when they're in the blood, they're in the blood. Holden once said it made... Made in Australia a new status symbol among the nations of the world. A status this symbol will no longer carry. Paul Carrack, 7 News.